Offshore Wind is a newly established offshore wind developer. It's a new company, but it's a new company with a lot of familiar names. Why don't you introduce the company to our audience, its founding and its mission? Sure, Greg. Uh, so Deep Wind Offshore is, is a pure play wind developer in, in the deep water segment. So, so that's kind of our, our ambition and where we want to play. Um, the company was, as you said, just launched a few weeks ago. Um, it's based out of Norway, but uh, we have strong international ambitions. And, and as you mentioned, we're, we're backed by, by some, some known companies, in particular in the maritime world. Um, one of our, our major shareholders and, and investors is the shipping company Knutsen, who, is, uh, who has one of the largest fleets of shuttle tankers and LNG carriers uh, all over the world. And they actually have a quite significant new build program now, uh, unlike many companies that they're building 16 new ships today. So, so they're a very progressive and, and, and big player in that uh, space. Um, the other owners we have are, are some leading Norwegian utility companies, Haugland Kraft and SQL, who are developers and operators of onshore grid and hydropower plants in Norway. So just to summarize, I mean, Deep Wind Offshore, our mission is to develop offshore wind projects um, we want to do it in a sustainable way and, and particular focus on local stakeholders and, and put them front and center because we think that's the only way that this can uh, that you can build these mega projects in in a successful way as you know the offshore wind space is growing and there are already several large established players how is deep wind offshore designed to stand out well i think that that's a great question and as you say there there's a lot of big players out there but I mean, the way we view it, uh, it's it's all about the size of the pie. And, and basically today, if you look particularly into floating and deep water wind, there, there's only like a dozen of units installed, around 100 megawatts maybe of, of floating wind. Um, the projection is that this is going to grow from about 100 megawatts today to about 18,000 megawatts 10 years from now, so 18 gigawatts. So, so basically, the, the pie is going to grow substantially. And, and we think that to, to make this happen, you will need a combination of both uh, existing uh, players and also new progressive smaller players that think uh, in a different way. So, so we think there's, there's room for both. Um, and I think one thing that stands out in our setup is that we have the combination of the maritime and offshore experience from, from, uh, from Knutsen. And we have the, also the utility and, and the deep experience in, in the power systems and the grid design that we have with, with uh, Haugland Kraft and SQL. So we think, we think that combination is strong uh, and, and, uh, and we think it'll, it'll be a differentiator. As we discussed at the outset, Norway has a very long and established uh, history in maritime and offshore oil and gas sectors. Um, this is your background. Can you put in perspective the opportunities that you see and discuss how fast, how far the offshore wind sector will grow? Yeah, I think your, your question is excellent. And it's, some, it, it's one that, uh, that a lot of people ask themselves these days. I think if you look at a country like Norway, uh, you know, our, our industry and our society is, is heavily relying on, on oil and gas. And, and we have been so for, for many, many years, for, for 40, 50 years. So I think when you look at the development and, and the direction that and volume of offshore oil and gas in the future, it, it's declining regardless of how you view it. Um, and I think the interesting fact is that already today uh, in Europe, uh, offshore wind is, is a huge industry. Uh, over the last 10 years, it's grown from almost nothing to, to 30 gigawatts installed. Um, and the interesting prediction is that even next year, uh, offshore wind is, is looking to, to eclipse and to surpass oil and gas investment in the North Sea. So, so we're already there today, uh, Greg, and, and that's what I think is, is, is a real eye opener, uh, in particular for, for European, um, European offshore industry. And if you look a little bit further, the International Energy Agency is, is predicting that within 2040, uh, offshore wind is going to be the, the biggest contributor and producer of electricity in Europe. Uh, so that, that's obviously huge. And, and if you look globally outside the, the EU and, and Europe, um, they're also predicting that by 2040, it, it, the, the investments within offshore wind will, be, will surpass $1,000 billion. So, so it's, 
it's, it's quite clear this is going to be a huge industry. It's already a huge industry in Europe. And, and I, I, I think that also in the US, it's, you're going to see equal kind of shift in the coming years. Uh, how does your company plan to invest? Um, where do you see the brightest opportunities in the coming 12 to 24 months? Yeah, no, that, that's that's uh, also a very interesting question. Um, um, and it's a bit of a crystal ball exercise, I think. But what is clear to us, obviously, we're, we're a Norwegian-born company. Uh, we, we have our, our, two, our three majority owners are, are solidly founded on the West Coast of Norway. So, so, so for us, the first step is, is obviously to, to chase um, the opportunities in the maiden leasing rounds that's coming up uh, this year in Norway. Uh, however, of course, we, we, uh, we, we uh, think there's huge opportunities in, in both existing and, and emerging markets, uh, both in Europe, but also in Asia and Americas. And, and we will look to leverage also the network uh, and experience of, of our owner Knutsen in terms of, um, of founding good, good places to enter, enter the market outside Norway. So, yeah, but we'll see. Um, in reading through the recent release uh, about the company, there was a note in there about the use of shuttle tankers uh, potentially for the offshore wind sector. Can you clarify specifically how you see, um, or can you clarify the potential that you see for shuttle tankers in this in this business? Yeah, sure. Uh, and I think to be to be clear, I mean one of the reasons why why Knutsen found interest in in talking with us. Uh, initially was also around the, the potential that they were looking to, to repurpose some of their, their ships. So I think it, it's, it's, a relevant, uh, it's a relevant opportunity for many players. Uh, I mean, basically, Knutsen have, have uh, some vessels that are coming off, off uh, charter and they're looking to, to, to maintain a good utilization of them. So, so basically, by, by converting from, from shipping and having tanks for oil, uh, or, or other you know, hydrocarbons, they're basically looking to, to uh, develop ships that are in good condition to, to instead look for, for transportation of, of uh, various components or, or even, even full hulls uh, for, for floating wind, uh, which, which again, there's going to be a huge potential for and, and a huge surplus for, I think, in the risk of going to be a lack of, of, of uh, enough capacity in that domain as the industry is uh, rapidly growing. So. I think it's yeah, it's a good opportunity for for many shipping companies uh, around the world. Well, that's excellent, Hans Petter. Again, I thank you for your time, and I truly look forward to following up with you and your colleagues as the company grows. Thank you so much, Greg. Appreciate the time.